to defend our relationship with God. That's why many times we go on retreat. And every time we are opened and expectant, there's no limit to what God is able to do. I'm John, I want to explain. I want to explain Genesis 1:28. That's where I'm going to. Let us create a being that can host God and reveal God. And when God entered this project, God now did something. Because we discovered that God is three persons in one. If he had created us like the Son, that would have been glory enough. If he created us like the Holy Ghost, that would have been glory enough. If he created us like the Father, that would have been glory enough. But he said, let us make man in our. So the one God is creating captures the totality of the Godhead. So in the man is the revelation of the word, is the revelation of the spirit, and is the revelation of the father. So when a man comes to his full potential, what you see is the manifestation of God. So an angel does not need to necessarily say God is great. When you see him, you will know that whoever it is that engineered this being is indeed great because they reveal God's majesty through their splendor. And that's how that civilization was because the heavens were created before the earth. And it's not just heaven, it was heavens that were created. The word and in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That and you may think is a conjunction. Those are aeons. Those are aeons in a timeless reality. So that civilization existed many aeons before earth was created and before men came into the equation. Because that realm existed, the spirit realm existed and God so pretended over that realm. Until a point came, God decided to embark on a new project. And one of the reasons that motivated the embarking of this project was the fact that one of the princes fell. They rebelled against God. And if you study the book of Ezekiel chapter 28 from verse 13, God gave us the reason why. He said, pride entered the heart of this prince because of his beauty. Because this angel was a unique type of angel. The Bible said his worship equipment, he doesn't carry them. They are wired into him. So when he shakes, you hear sound. If he moves, heaven comes under worship. He can arrest heaven. When God comes out of the east gate into the temple, he knows the sound to produce so that the majesty of God can be manifested. Such were his powers. The Bible said he reflected wisdom. He said, thou that sealed the sun. So he was the totality of wisdom in manifestation. He said, you were covered with ten stones. And he mentioned diamond. He mentioned jasper. He mentioned topaz. He mentioned sapphire. All the stones that we look for. If you, if you see somebody wearing a diamond necklace or ring or earring, there, there's a way you feel that you are wearing that the guy was clothed with diamond. So if he moves at night, he, he radiates light at different frequency. Imagine a creature walking and his diamond. That was the glory. He said, because of your beauty, you allow the iniquity to enter your heart. And so God decided to embark on another project because this angel, coincidentally, was given authority to rule over the first earth. And I don't have time to go into it. The theology is too long. But when he fell, God decided to raise another prince that will stand on earth as the governor to rule over the earth. That was when he went back to the studio of eternity. And in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, when he said, let us make man, the whole of heavens was arrested. Because for the first time in aeons, God has gone back to the creative studio to come up with something else. We have seen all the powers of the angels. We never knew that there was another kind of beauty because we thought beauty was completed in heaven. When you see Michael, you see strength. You see Gabriel, you see mysteries. You see Lucifer, you see excellence. We thought beauty was completed. Is there still something in your creativity? Let's see what you want to come up with. Is it another angel? But God did not create another angel. Now, if God created us as archangels, that would have been beautiful enough. But he did it. This time around, God wanted to manifest his own glory. And because they have never seen God, when God appears on his throne, the effulgence of the glory is too bright. You can't behold it. Even the cherubims that walk in the presence of God, the Bible said they cover their faces. You can't see him. He comes with too much energy and light. So when the 24 elders look up, if God appears, they fall down. Because it will be difficult to behold him. And so for the first time, God now said, let us create another being in our own image. So all the heavens were arrested. Now let's look, like, let's look at what God looked like. Because we've not seen his shape before. We've not seen his dimension before. <laughs> oh, God of mercy. Why do you think our own glory is not external? Because if our glory is external, they will worship us. Because we are created in the image of God. So God decided to hide the glory in earthen vessel. We have to hide it. 
if we don't hide it anybody that sees that being we assume that is god walking so he hid it on our inside so the reason our own design was inverted was because we came to reveal god we came to manifest god we came to express god so when a man begins to walk in his purpose and ordination, what you will see will be the fingerprints of God. That's why John spoke. He said, as he is, so are we, not in heaven, on earth, in this world. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. If you have seen me, you have, it's as good as you have seen Christ. Because I have known how to enter into my internal elements to reveal the Christ to a generation. And he said, this is the mystery of this age. When heaven was created, there was a mystery that governed it. But when this age was created, the mystery is that God with tabernacle in man. He said, Christ in you is the hope of glory. So when you know that God is in you, you are expected to manifest only glory. Psalm 91 from verse 1. I know most of us pray this and it's good to pray it. But it's not telling you to pray this. It's telling you what your reality should be. It says, he that dwelleth. Not, not, this is not a Christian. Whoever that dwelleth. So if a Christian doesn't dwell, he will suffer. He that dwelleth, anybody who makes up his mind to abide, he said, in the secret place of the Most High, he now began to show you, he shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. This is not a prayer. He's telling you the outcome of his life. If you will dwell, he said, number one, you will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He said, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress my god in whom will i trust that means god will become your fortress because you abide there go to the next verse he says surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence so whatever calamity is happening around you is not your business he shall cover thee he's giving you and he's telling you the the, the outcome of dwelling he shall cover thee with his feathers and order his wings shall thou trust his truth shall be your shield and your buckler go to the next verse he said thou shall not be afraid even fear will be removed from you you won't know when thou shall not be afraid of the terror by night nor the arrows that fly by day so they say people are dying it's not your problem there's epidemic it's not your problem no matter what the devil throws into the earth you are already exonerated he said nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness he said nor the destruction that wasted in noonday all of this thing you have no business with it he said a thousand shall fall by your side ten thousand by your right hand he says, it shall not come near you. Not because you are running away from it. It has enough intelligence to avoid you. And it's not because you are praying. You are not waking up every day and say, no, we for fashion. It doesn't come near you because you are already abiding. And why? He says, only with thy eyes shall thou see and behold. So you'll be hearing the news. It will not touch you. And the reason is because of what? What he said in verse 1 and what he said in verse 9. He said, because you have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, your habitation. If you stay with God, there is no way you will not be fruitful. If you like, sell water. If you like, sell slippers. If you like, sell cars. No matter what you do, it's not a factor. You will prosper. Daddy read a scripture from Psalm 1 a moment ago. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor is seated in the seat of the scornful. He said, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on this law does he meditate day and night. That's abiding. He said, it's like the tree planted by the rivers of living waters. It produces its fruit in its season. He doesn't miss. There's accuracy in productivity. He said, his leaves shall not wither. If you abide, see, build capacity to abide, my sister. Build capacity to abide with God. It may be difficult at the beginning. Don't worry. Start. At a point, the Holy Ghost will now help you. The Bible said widows brought their dead back to life. This is not for professors. You don't have to be educated. Just stay with God. Start talking to him from the level you know him. And watch what happens with your life after one month. After two months. After three months. You will not be able to explain it. I've taught these principles again and again. Sometimes I run into people on the plane. I was traveling the other time. I just sat. The man talked to me and said, is this you? The first problem he had is that you look smaller than you look on TV. I said, to him, maybe it's technology. This is me. He now shook me and said, thank you. God bless you. This is a businessman. He has applied all the strategies he knew. Both from the one he studied in economics and the one he studied from his master that mentored him. Nothing was working. And I started teaching on staying with God. He just stayed there. One day he woke up. He was going out. He heard the voice. And that voice started coming to him. His investments, the voice would tell him, do this one. Invest here. Don't do this. Don't do this. It was like following a, a compass. Following a navigator. That's how business began to rise from 
capital of 4 million. As he was talking to me, he was already on over 900 million. And he said he was traveling to broker another deal that day. Everything turned around and he couldn't believe it because that voice was always there, but he couldn't hear it. The earth was too noisy. So when God spoke, the voice was choked in other voices. God's voice is not loud. It's only distinct. And you must train yourself to pick it. And the way to train yourself is to abide. Because when he comes, he comes in a still small voice. Many people have not stayed with God. So the noise of the world overshadows the voice that should lead them to their productivity. Build capacity. Build capacity to abide. Every day. One hour. Two hours. Three hours. Stay there. And begin to grow in it. Tell yourself, I grow now because I can silence my spirit in God's presence for six, six hours. See how your life will turn around. You will be shocked. I know the place of prophecy and I will talk about it. But I'm telling you things that should define your life. It will make prophecy work faster. God is not running with the world. You have to wait for him. Sir, build capacity to abide in God's presence. I'm telling you, there is something he does to you. The devil will create a system that will make you hate God and his presence. But if you want to become fruitful by God, you must learn to stay with him. In Mark 3, 14, he said he called them to be with him so that he will send them. If you are not with him, he cannot mobilize you. You have to be with him. Listen, learn this. It's better to go to your prayer room and sleep there than to sleep in front of a television. So even if you are feeling sleepy, go there. Sleep and wake up and pray. If you are sleeping, pray, play prayer. Let the prayer be playing at the, playing at the background. Play a worship song. Sleep there. There is no law that you must be awake every time you are in your prayer room. The most important thing is that you are under the shadow. Stay there. Hear what the Bible said. Isaiah 40 from verse 28 to 31 you will see amazing things see there are things in the scriptures learn it your life will change he said has thou not known has thou not heard that the everlasting god the lord creator of the ends of the earth fainted not neither is weary he said there's no searching of his understanding he's giving you god's cv and then he went further he gave it power to the faint he's showing you now that this is who god is but god is also generous enough to help those who are not there to come there so he's telling you what God can do for you. But he will also tell you how God will do it. He giveth power to the faint. He said unto them that had no might. He increased strength. He now said in case you think you don't need what God gives. Let me warn you ahead of time. Even the youth shall faint. Because among men the strongest are youth. He said the young men shall utterly fall. That means don't make the mistake of relying on your natural abilities. The Bible has already excreted men. He said, woe unto the man that trusted in the arm of flesh. Jesus speaking, he said, it is the spirit that quickens. John 6, 63, he said, the flesh profits nothing. So if you think, oh, I am fair, so I have favor, you are joking. Oh, I am young, so I can do it by my strength. You are joking. He said, even the youth shall faint. He said, the young men shall utterly fall. That means they are fall will shock them. It will be colossal. The young man shall utterly fall. He said, but they that wait upon the Lord. So the people God increases strength is not Christians. It's not churchgoers. It's they that what? Wait upon the Lord. He said, them, he renews their strength. And he didn't just say he renews their strength and left it in limbo. He said, they mount up with wings like the eagles. See, when you stay with God, Something will happen to you that you too will be shocked. You will ask yourself, is this me? Six months ago, I was a beggar. Five months ago, I barely had food to eat. What happened? Strength came to you. He said, they mount up. That means you are not waiting to be carried. You have now learned a way of ascending. They mount up with wings like the eagles. He said, they run. They don't get weary. They walk. They don't faint. So fainting and weariness will vanish from your syllabus. Not because you bought anything, you just waited. If you will spend time with God, what will come out of you, your generation can't recover from it. In Isaiah chapter 60 verse 15, he said you were a wasted land. He said no man went through you. He said but I will make you an eternal excellency. The joy of many generations. When God wants to bless you, your generation is too small to receive of it. There are things God will do with you in 60 years after you have gone. 
that your generation will realize the next generation will realize the weight of what you presented to your world but the technology is in what waiting this is a gen z generation everything is in a hurry we cook fast we travel fast so we think god too will be running he's a king you will wait until he shows up you will wait he's a king you will wait it was be by his own tent look at moses at the age of 80 climb mount sinai only god knew how many days he climbed that mountain only god knew the blisters he must have had he showed up you assume that god will come and say welcome you tried god didn't show up the guy stayed there for another six days it is after it was after six days that his majesty appeared because god doesn't come late when he comes is the time his majesty arrived and when he finished with moses as moses went down the bible said even moses did not know that the skin of his face had changed because as he saw him he became like him so the moses that went up was different from the one that came down the one that went up was a seeker the one that came down was a lawgiver in fact a point came in second corinthians 3 15 you know what the bible said it said when moses is read moses became the law of god when moses is read and that's why he couldn't die he became an immortal a man became so relevant that even after god killed him because the guy couldn't die god told him go to the mountain of barin in the mountains of nebo there i will kill you because if you leave him he will remain here till today you will go to jerusalem to see moses and he will come out and say how are you <laughs> When God knew that he had taught immortality too much, God told him, I will kill you. But see the irony of the whole matter. Even after God killed him, he was still relevant. So much so that Satan came looking for his dead body. A dead body was more important than a living people. Because of the capacity to stay. And a, an archangel was mobilized. Go and take that body quickly. Don't allow Satan to take that body to the museum of hell. They will learn some things about glory. They that wait upon the Lord. They mount up with wings like the eagle. Listen, being fruitful is not the problem. What is your capacity? You go to God's presence. Hey, Father, I thank you for today. You are happy. Hey, like five minutes, you run out. And you want to affect your generation. Do you know how many barren women are on earth? Do you know how many orphans are on earth? Do you know how many sick people are on earth? Do you know how many confused people are on earth? You think you carry the knowledge of biology and philosophy that you read in the university for four years to address the problem of billions of people? Do you know what it means for people to stop for 30 minutes to hear you? You know how busy their world is? Every minute counts. The implication of time is money. Nobody has 30 minutes to waste with you. If men sit down to hear you, it means you are coming from a superior dimension. I was preaching somewhere recently. And the men that were present, some were professors. Former secretary to federal government was there. Former deputy governors of CBA. People that should be my father. What do you tell them? Anything you read, they've read it. And they have lived this life three times your age, so they have better experiences. The only way you can talk and they will hear and say you did well is when you talk from a superior realm. Because the realm you now download from is the realm where the ancient of days himself dwells. If you want to affect your generation, hear me, you must master how to abide. That thing that chases you from your prayer room, better go and fight with it. That thing that chases you from God's presence, if you want to be fruitful, better go and declare war on that thing. The next time you go to your prayer room, lock the door. Tell yourself, I'm not leaving here until after 10 hours. If I will die, I will die here. Because this is where my future is. Your future is not in America. It's on the altar. 